Hello. Right, turn that audio off now. Well, right, this is a really quick show and tell style video because yesterday I did about half an hour of streaming and the whole thing broke. Not only did I fail miserably trying to uh, get some decals onto a model and was really clumsy, so I shouldn't have even bothered trying to paint that day, uh, but uh, the sound didn't work either. So this time I'm talking and hoping that the audio is getting uploaded with it as well. Um, so here we go. What am I going to do? I've got 6mm miniatures in front of me, a combination of GHQ, Battletech, some old battle cars and other bits and pieces and I was just going to talk through them. Do that quickly for 10 minutes because this is live streaming and um, you know, a bit of a show and tell really, have a look, what do you think of GHQ models, can they mix okay with sci-fi models? I think they can, so I'm going to start showing them off. Right, so here they are. So I may take some out, but if I go through this case I can uh, sort of talk through them as I share them. So the first thing to notice is they're all the same colour. Um, Sorry, zooming out there and that's not getting very close, is it? Right. They're all the same colour because I sprayed them with an airbrush and essentially uh, tried to keep them in theme as an army, uh, which was a bit of a crazy idea in some ways because I've mixed in modern armour with older armour as well um, and with some sci-fi models too, so that's a Battletech. I was painting them for a game called Future War Commander and I thought, you know, I'll go for it. I'll just grab a bunch of these GHQ models I like because they had you know, they had mortars, like this guy. Try and get them to focus correctly so you can see it. And I thought the detail of them on, the, on them is astounding. So this is GHQ 6mm scale. Actually, I can't remember whether they precisely call them 1 300th scale or if they're 1 2 8 5. Either way, they're very nice. Uh, this one arrives with separate doors you have to glue in. Uh, you also glue in the little mortar in the bottom. I don't know if you call it a mortar actually. Um, I think so. And the sort of machine gun uh, there also gets glued on. There's some storage which I painted in a different colour and uh, I think officially they would just be all painted the same colour as the vehicle. But since I was painting for sci-fi I thought I'd give them a bit more detail. So um, that's just one example close up, but I also mixed in some of these guys which are Games Workshop and I did them in a contrasting sort of darker colour. In fact these feature on a video, airbrushing video I showed and I used washes on them too. I've got a few of those in there, well actually I've just a couple. I think I've actually got more but I haven't got everything from my collection in this one box. So those are Dreadnoughts from Games Workshop. Uh, this is from really useful boxes. Um, it's a standard tray that they do. And I've put little magnetic plastic stick-on, stick-on magnetic stuff in there. And these are all metal washers. Uh, I want to say metal washers, metal punched discs rather than washers. And it gives them a little bit of, um, oh, show the actual feature. Gives them some handy uh, sort of addition, that's not the right word, attraction, <laughs> whatever it does, it stops them sliding around as much on there. I don't put it in every uh, tray. So you may notice there's some of these larger round discs in there. In the game Future War Commander, um, there is a command element that you have on your force that's kind of like abstracted a bit. I, actually, I don't think you can fire with it, but it's important where it is on the table. So I was using these uh, discs, these are plastic discs rather than metal, cut out of plastic card. I think I cut that circle out myself by going around the top of a, uh, a pot of some kind and then cutting it and then clipping it out. And I used extra plastic card, different plastic card on top and little strips along the edge to give it that kind of look like um, a concrete base. And that's a bit of old epic sprue on the front. In fact, I love Epic Sprue. I use it on lots of different things. There's another bit of Epic Sprue there. 
Uh, yeah, so oh look, I was I got this out specially so I could point at things. So yeah, on this base, there's the Epic Sprue. Um, this is an old BattleTech um, AeroTech Space Tech. I don't know which one it is, but I once um, had a good well, I still have a sort of good relationship with Ralpath of Europe, and they provided me some bits of prizes and bits and pieces when I did a BattleTech show at Salute in the UK many years ago. And they they bunged me a whole load of miscasts, bits of old robots and things, and this was a spaceship. So I've modelled it on there, as if it looks like it sort of crashed a little while ago and made it sort of rusty and part of the base. That's an epic model from the Games Workshop range. And I just put it on there, so it looked like a command base. And then the idea with these command bases was that I would then sort of scatch on some kind of command vehicle like so. That's from um, Ground Zero Games. This was painted by a friend of mine called Daniel. Uh, there's a couple of models that have been painted by him in there but most of this is my my army and my painting. Um, so yeah, you could even put something on the back of that, couldn't you? Like another vehicle. But uh, anyway, yeah, so that was meant to be a command base. Excuse me. So I did a few of those, um, like this one. And that's a, um, a scope dog, I think you call it, Japanese manga style uh, model. Uh, again, that's GZG do those are sort of mini robots, and another uh, Games Workshop command kind of guy with that on the back. Just sort of like a, made it look like a decent command base. I'll do a couple more of those, which I'll just show off. Uh, this one, that's a GZD sort of command or medic tent or something. I just put it on there with some trash cans. I don't know where I got those from. From there, and that's a bit of old sprue. Looks like an old cylinder of some kind around the back. So basically, I was just super detailing it. This one, in fact, you can see on the base, I had put a uh, a magnet, and I think one of these sort of models that I had as a command vehicle, I put a magnet on the back of it, and uh, that's where it went. So those are those command bases, and then back over to some of these vehicles to give them a sort of rundown on what they are. Actually, yeah, I've definitely I've got like um, five or six of these, and I've only got one of these in there, so they've they've made their way into other boxes or something somewhere. So yeah, this is a BattleTech model. I imagine it's like a heavy tank, hundred ton tank. Terrible. I can't remember the name of it. It's been so long. I remember there was some miscasting on the back there, it was obviously where it came out of the, the mould. And um, the only extra details I've added on there is obviously I've put those radios on, radio aerials, and uh, also some uh, decals on the side, just to sort of add a bit of detail. It's probably going out of focus there, that's better. And this is another one in that, uh, another heavy assault tank from Battletech. I think in the past some people have sort of painted that um, almost like a some sort of visor, uh, like a canopy kind of screen in there. And again, I've put two aerials on there, and you know, I kind of did a basic job really. This wasn't like a case of super super detailing the miniatures themselves. I just kept it simple and uh, clean because then it looks kind of quite effective as an army really. Uh, these are these are piano wire, and I've got an interesting story to tell about that. Uh, I had a close friend of mine uh, when we started these six mil armies said to me, "You've got to use piano wire. It's the sh it's just the best stuff." So we went out. We had to get f special tiny drill bits. Um, it's a pain to use piano wire, uh, mostly because you'll get injured, and I can guarantee I can injure a friend instantly and draw blood. If I was to show them this case and say, "Grab a minute, have a look." As soon as you put your finger down at speed on that, it will punch you, and you end up with a little bead of blood. And they've done this to me a few times. So this friend of mine convinced me, he said, you've got to use piano wire, it's the best stuff ever. And I said, at the time, um, well, I'm used to using a toothbrush, because, you know, you just glue that in, and it has that kind of curvy look to it. It's not going to hurt you. It's probably a little bit harder to glue in, because you're, you're not going to put this sort of stiff piece of piano wire and embed it into the base 
Uh, but yeah, I used that, and he said, oh no, you've got to use this as the stuff. We did our whole armies. A month later, he came around my house, and he said to me, you know what, the best stuff to use, it's toothbrush bristle. And, uh, well, I didn't tell him. I didn't like to say that it was me that advised that in the first place, but you know how that goes when you've got wargaming friends giving you their, their best advice and tips on things. Um, and what sort of goes around comes around, I guess. Uh, this one I really like. This is an old... Oh, look, I've bent that one already. That tends to happen with these GHQ models, by the way. Um, very, very... I mean, they're super fine scale detailed models, so if you've got anything like turrets on there, you do risk getting them bent. And if you can imagine, look at that one on the Battletech model. That's that's not going to bend anywhere. Um, whereas these more fine scale, accurately depicted models, uh, they obviously do suffer a bit from uh, bendage in uh, storage. So another reason why I um, move them around in this box where they have a bit of a magnet on the bottom. So these I believe are French armoured cars. Again, they look sci-fi to me. Um, any number of these new modern sci-fi um, kind of Netflix medium budget movies might have one of these on a uh, you know, dinosaur planet of some kind or another. Uh, but they're um, nicely made and I think kind of wheels look fantastic. The detailing on the wheels and everything is stunning. So look out for these sort of things from GHQ. You may not immediately go for an Abrams tank like this and go, oh, I want one of those in my collection, because it looks quite classic, doesn't it? It's, it doesn't look as sci-fi as you might think. Um, but, yeah, it looks great. Um, but not a sci-fi... Not as easy to fit in with a sci-fi game as, say, something like this Jeep. Um, because it, it doesn't look as... Cla it doesn't look like that classical, oh, there's an Abrams straight away. Um, what else have they got in there? So, yeah, these are the sort of armoured vehicles. This one's got like a mini rocket. Uh, so it's very similar again to this one. Um, but without the uh, the open bay at the back. But again, great model. I, took, I spent a lot of time on these. You probably can't see it because I'm shading it. I'm trying to see a way to get enough light into the underside of the, of the tyres so you can see them. Probably just enough light, but yeah, I detailed the inside of the uh, the wheels, and also uh, dust put sort of a dust on those wheels as well to make them look quite natural and worn in. Uh, in fact, on this one over here, you can see on this French armoured car, you can see I went a bit over overboard on the glue. It's kind of like sticking up halfway on the tyre. Well, I guess it just looks like some mud on the uh, on there. No one's going to see that way if you're playing these from a, on a table as an army. Yeah, so I know I haven't got every model in here that I wanted to show, but uh, I mean, otherwise I've just got other bits and pieces. So this is a GZG um, kind of a bus, emergency vehicle, whatever you want to call it. I painted those many, many years ago, um, and they've always just sort of lingered in my collection. If I'm playing a 6 mil game, I might put it around the town, and those are two kind of classic 6 mil. Games Workshop battle cars. I've got a large collection of those. Um, those are two that are painted by my friend Daniel as well, by the way. Um, and um, I've got a big collection of those, so I'll probably do another video at some point in time and just sort of show and tell my battle cars range. Uh, I've always wanted a game of Car Wars again in that scale, so I've kind of got them lingering around for, to do that. So that's kind of the, well, there's two other types of vehicle in there, I'll just sort of show them off. Um, we've got a this long range mobile artillery, and again I put sort of a de decal on the side, painted up the tiny scaled um, stowage and equipment. And there's one thing worth mentioning about these, as I understand GHQ, um, these are all modelled. So these are not 3D printed. All of these are little tiny bits of different coloured plastic card that they build up um, to model in scale, and then uh, they go, they get cast and you know moulded and cast into production. So all that detail comes from someone's hand crafting work rather than it being a, a 3D print. So you can see they look quite good. And I'm quite pleased with this setup using the GoPro here. So. 
Uh, it's another reason to sort of show these off because it's a, a nice high res 1080p view on some of these models, which you don't always get when you visit the websites. So yeah, look at those tracks, fantastic detailing on those. And you know, for people that don't know the six mil scale, if I bring in my massive giant finger, there you go, you get to see the sort of size that is. Um, the decal on the side there is a Bandai, which was I was showing off in my live stream yesterday and which totally failed without the sound. Um, and it's a sci-fi one really, as it bears no relevance. Again, these numbers on here, I just put them on there for a bit of fun really, uh, rather than any historical reality because they're sci-fi. I was going to use them for a sci-fi game. I mean, to, to, to be honest with you, after I did these, I thought the stuff I write, like the most is things like these small armoured cars and armoured vehicles that could fit in in any period. Whereas, as I was saying earlier, the, the classic um, Abrams shape is, you know, it looks cool, but it's, it's not as sci-fi. You can't fit it into the sci-fi without having a bit of a jarring moment when you look down. Oh, it's a modern tank rather than a sci-fi tank. Um, but yeah, these little ones can fit in a lot more easily, so you can more readily use them. Actually, also these too. Oh, and there's a surprise one. There's a Vietnam War era one, which again, uh, don't ask me why I thought it would be good to, to have it in my sci-fi army. But uh, as an early tech, maybe. But as part of this army, it doesn't really work. Um, but I painted it anyway. I liked it. Um, so there we go. I'm going to finish now, just in case the sound hasn't worked or something else hasn't worked on here. So thanks for listening in. Bear with me if all the sound's broken again. I'm doing these live streams just to get things out uh, on the web uh, rather than spending hours in post-production. But uh, hopefully you saw something you like there. I'll, I'll put those guys back out there actually so you can get another view of those. Just as I sign off. Um, yeah, Again those are dreadnoughts. And I gave them, rather than brightening them up, I gave them that contrasting sort of dark grey and black to fit in the army so they'd stand out kind of hulking walkers. Okay, thanks for listening.